Hey guys, and uh, I just want to start by thanking anyone who's been on this journey with me. It's been quite a funny process, and um, you know I do a lot of these ad libs, so I always start with a, an introduction of where I'm at, so that you guys can just know. And I've been kind of excavating my own psyche with these videos lately, as well as really taking care of myself. I want to start this one with um, just talking about some processes I've been through myself. And uh, let you guys know that it's been showing incredible results lately in terms of aligning me with the things that I want to be doing. And so I'm going to share them with you. Uh, a while back I did a Sweat Lodge. This is where you... Well, look it up. It's a Sweat Lodge. It's, it's a ceremony. It's South American. There's no medicines involved, if you like. And it's just sitting with yourself and um in a in a in a blacked out tent that's being steamed up and uh you just become really pre present with yourself and you face you face whatever comes up you just sit with it guys like i've been saying in certain videos you're allowed to let yourself feel and actually feeling is processing and i've been starting to learn that because guys i was psychologized deeply when i was a child and i don't kick psychology it was a it was a great great foster parent so my dad died when i was 14 he had a stroke i've said this before came home from golf one day just didn't get up healthy as an ox completely completely uh unexpected then i developed an eating disorder and was made to go see a shrink if it wasn't for my dad it was definitely gonna be for the eating disorder right the universe works in funny ways guys and uh it, it wants something from us i do believe now in soul contracts i felt like that was part of my soul contract Whoop, come here you gotta come to this teacher right here and you'll be grateful for your journey later on. And um, guys, take care of your health. Speeds up that journey. Follow your heart. Speeds up that journey. But I'm going to get to that in a moment. So. I had psychology become my father at a young age. And psychology is full of a lot of rules, guys. A lot of rules. They're good rules. You know, certain information becomes wisdom only with experience. And psychology is definitely that. And at some point, it kind of takes you away from another intuition. And that's what I'm learning. That intuition is that of the body. And guys, if you follow this. This is why I moved recently from, from, from talking the talking cure to a lot of, you know, more integrative methods of doing therapy. Body therapy whether it be uh, Osho Lilo descendant workshops, uh, guys, and don't watch Wild Wild Country. It, I feel like that's just, I mean, the guy was that, but he wrote a bunch of amazing literature and he was actually a, an amazing pioneer of a body therapy methodology. And just like any guru, some, you know, they're human too sometimes they enter realms that they don't know their own responses to with power comes great responsibility you know it's why john snow should have been the king in in game of thrones because he actually didn't want it you know so he stayed sane because well except he missed the mark in becoming the king and drove his lover crazy that false humility anyway that's another that's another episode entirely uh yeah and um and so with all this new ways i've been approaching things meditation yoga journaling the sweat lodge uh plant medicines they've taught me to sit with myself the the the, the exercise if it's fruitful hypnosis started doing that recently with a coach so i guess this is people who are into the nlp realm you sit with that stuff and it does the work for you because it sifts through your subconscious. I mean, which is what psychology is attempting to do on a certain level with talking, but it's, it, it's just really, it's really rigorous. And I used to get told this by my teachers and be like, uh, yeah, sure. And now I'm starting to actually, well, when you witness yourself, when you journal yourself, when you keep a um, some kind of, diary then you can really notice the change especially if you go back 
And when you start to set intentions, things line up quicker. So there's, 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 we've created these words which kind of seem to program our subconscious intentions. Um, what we call medicine, ceremonies, which have been ancient practices for healing. And so what I've been doing lately, instead of trying to solve everything with my mind, which is what psychology taught me to do in a sense, and, and it worked great. It worked great for trying to, for, in a way, reading people's intentions and where people are coming from. But then my heart was not being listened to. And uh, so I tried to solve things with my head co constantly and it got me in trouble. Because we're too complicated for that. Too many factors. We're not seeing ourselves from an eagle eye view. We're projecting. We have a shadow. We have aspects of ourselves that until healed will not allow us to see the truth of intentions from other people. And just will not have the wherewithal, even if it is the truth of their intention, to have actually a more mature response to take this to to harmony, whether it be, whether it be uh, not trying to solve the problem, but realizing you need to set a clear boundary. Wow, which is something that psychology, as a, as a father, kind of, kind of made me want to psychologize others at a really young age. It was really isolating. Um, and pff, understandably so. I've found a lot more... Uh, resolve in in holding space when i'm not sure what i want to do with an outcome when i start to notice that i always kind of tend to have the same approach and it never turns out the, the same like it turns out the same way most of the time which is not the way i like it that doesn't mean other people are dumb which is what i used to think <sighs> shows what kind of an asshole i was it means you don't know how to talk to people which is what i'm realizing shows what kind of an asshole i <laughs> <laughs> and actually we're more beautiful we're way more beautiful than that if you sit and hold space and don't want something from someone else guys conscious listening uh my childhood psychiatrist taught me this actually that um that you're not really listening if you know what you want to say already before the phrase is done that you can sit there and take it in but sometimes it is a true body impulse to not let it in so the you know there's a tool for you to weigh up. In any case, I want to get to what I'm trying to say. But I'm, I'm going to give it a lot of colors along the way. So please excuse me. This will this will make the final information more full. Yes, yeah, can give it more dimensions. Because sometimes we learn things and we go, what does that mean? What does that mean? And if I give you like a very vivid picture, then you can link it to a story as well, which gives us more information in a sense. So that's all I'm trying to do. Let's keep going. And I'm very aware of <laughs> how long these th these videos are, but I appreciate people going through them with me. <sighs> yeah. So what I've been doing lately to remedy my old approaches is to really trust my body more and to trust my subconscious more. And since going through that wet sweat lodge, I've, I've learned that there's a difference between assimilation and integration. And after you've gone through a ceremony or like a deep therapy or something, a hypnosis session, it, you, what you want to do is integrate. Assimilation means you get a bunch of insights, you're able to view your behavior, and then you can consciously make choices to change it. And so you have all the words to teach with. So if you want to be a teacher, keep assimilating. However, integration is when you just kind of let the body take care of that you let the body what it felt like for me is all this soot at the bottom of my ocean my internal psyche my subconscious have been sifted up and it was floating around and so it's getting all these thoughts a lot of thoughts coming up and what i've learned is that the body wants you to learn that it's okay to feel things that's where our health comes up and our dishealth is when we're scared to actually go through life, when we're scared to let ourselves feel things. So we create a new tension, a new behavior around feeling that thing. Because you can watch my video on anxiety for a method around this. For more details on that. Um, because there is a way, well, I'll get to that later. So what I was doing was I was sitting there. I would So after, after the um, sweat lodge, what I started doing was... And I learned this from the artist's way. I started doing a week of subconscious journaling. 
I find this is a very, it's a very profound tool. It's a very interesting tool. What you do is first thing when you wake up in the morning, uh, you start writing. You just start writing and you write three pages and you don't try and edit it too much. You just write, you just go into a flow. And the theory is by the third page, your subconscious will start to come up. And so the next day after the sweat lodge, I did this, I felt it come up and usually I try and go, oh, so what does it mean? Do I have to have answers to this and this and this and this and this? This time I was like, you know what? I go crazy with, with trying to know what the right thing to do, the wrong, right or wrong thing to do. I would like to try and trust my body and see how that works. So what I did is I just sifted it up through the writing and I just sat down. I put a blindfold on so I could feel like I was back in the sweat lodge and I just really watched myself. And guys, I really, really encourage these, these, these ceremonies as, as an amazing way to sit and watch yourself. But if you don't have that available, take a hot Epsom salt bath. That's what started it for me. I had a back sprain and for months, half a year, I, you know, I needed one of these, maybe not half a year, three to four months, I needed one of these hot Epsom salt baths to get through the pain of the day. And um, because I was told that the hotter I could take the bath, the better it would be for my healing. I was, you know, desperate to heal. So I would sit in this bath as hot as I could take it. Like past what you would rationally do for pleasure. To like, oh my God, like this is this happened to me right as I graduated from my master's in acting. It's like, oh my God, I need to hit the ground running. I need to get my career underway. I don't have time for this back sprain. This made me have to re-question my whole self physically. Don't have time for that. This is really depressing. If I gotta take a hot bath and it's gonna loosen this stuff, I'm gonna get in there as hot as I can because I need to get on with life. I need this to let go. I don't even know what caused it. I didn't even know what caused it, guys. It was psychosomatic. I think it was a lot of stress. I was taking on too many things at once. And I didn't know how to rest myself. I didn't know how to listen to my body. So guys, again, the universe gave me a lesson of not knowing how to listen to your body and not feeling safe listening to your body. I felt like I had to... I had to be there for this person. I overwork myself, these two jobs, and try and get. And then even on days off, I have to work out. I haven't slept at all. You know, just stuff like this. Uh, I'm not ready to go into the industry right away. What I did was I did a physical theater intensive right after. Right after I graduated, actually, because I wanted to practice with another teacher that I barely had time with. A little more. He didn't end up even doing the physical theater intensive that he's usually a part of. So, you know, the universe teaches, guys. And, um, yeah, so I learned to be really present with myself in those hot Epsom salts baths. Because what I realized is if I, um, if the water might feel scolding to my foot, if I get my whole body in, the heat is spread through the body, and so it feels less hot. So it doesn't mean I can... I'm going to burn if if I, if just my foot feels like it might burn. I can only tell my whole body goes in. And it also felt like the more I responded to the pain, the more I responded to the heat in a frightened way, the more it felt like it was burning. So if I just slowed my breath and learned to stay with myself, then I could, I could bear through it. So the sweat lodge reminded me of this because I haven't really, you know, I do it regularly, but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't do it to heal anymore. I do it for pleasure because like, I've gotten used to that level of heat and I just kind of love it. And so that week following, I would just sit there after doing the journaling and let this stuff sift and just trust that giving it time to come up was actually doing myself a favor. It was actually going to lead me in the right direction because my subconscious would solve the problem for me and that even more so I could trust my choices and my behaviors over the next coming day. So I just started to trust myself more. I didn't try to answer things from a meditation. When I, when I got up, I would just leave it. I'd be like, okay, I think I saw this, which one of these are significant. I'd be like, nope, I'm not going to think about it. I did the work. I'm going to go through my day. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to love what I want to love. Well, I'm going to love what I'm doing. 
and um, it's led me to a super productive week this week to continue to do this, to continue to look at things this way, not to stress overly so about the decisions I've got to make. And so um, I've come up with this script today, so I'm going to be referring to this script um, throughout the video. So guys, as I was saying, I kind of displayed in this controls a bitch, guys. So as I've said before, uh, I used to make decisions based on pros and cons constantly whilst growing up because, uh, you know, I wanted to trust my parents. I wanted to trust authority figures. I wanted to trust the literature, the jargon, whatever it was. But what I found is that my body kept, uh, I don't know, coming up with little games. Like it started with um, eating disorders. And I got sent to boarding school for the same reason. And that was a way to make sure that I didn't stay in the boarding school because I needed help. So I got pulled out. Um, I used to prioritize the gym, even though when I was studying, even though there was days I really shouldn't have been. Um, if I wanted to be more comfortable and feel more grounded in, in, in what I was trying to achieve. And these are, so guys... When you go through a trauma in life, um, you kind of you kind of fragment at that age, and there's a part of you that becomes scared to grow up, so it kind of pulls you back down, and that's what all this medicine work is about. All the therapies, all the meditation, all the yoga, sweat lodges, and whatever else that you are going into for change and for deep healing. That's what it is. It's it's as we get a certain age, we have to learn that we can parent our inner child so it can free up that habit that we're addicted to and catch up with wherever you want to be and who you really are at that moment in time. And I realized that I was doing all these things. And even recently, like uh, I've been doing the Vim Hof for two years, but my body um, was telling me to slow down on it. And during the lockdown, I did it one morning where I really could have taken a day off. I was like, God, uh, what I would really love is to cheat, have a coffee because I quit coffee and just have a really lazy day because I didn't sleep well. Have a lazy day in front of the TV or something. And I was like, no, you know what? I, I have the wherewithal to do this. I'm going to do my Wim Hof and then I'm going to and then and then and then I'll do the coffee and whatever else, you know, it's, it'll be good for me. I'll slip it in there. And so I went into Routine control. And I think I liked doing the Wim Hof because after you do the cold shower, you look you look good. Your your blood is flowing and all this stuff. And so I had all I had these practices that they did that I wasn't doing them out of out of out of pleasure. I was doing them out of um I was seeking my own self worth in them. Yeah. I was seeking my own self worth in them. And that day my body told me, you got to stop. And on my fifth round of the Wim Hof, because I do it so well, I passed out. Guys, this is really embarrassing. I passed out, and I think, because I was passed out, I'm not really sure. And this is this is pretty funny, actually. I, um, I need myself in the face, like a jerk motion. Ugh, need myself in the face whilst being passed out guys it was horrifying <laughs> it was horrifying because i came out of blackout and i was like and i was crunching teeth in my mouth and i was noticing blood dripping out of my fucking face and i held on to my bed and just because i wanted to be able to sit up because i just what i was able to calculate at that point was that i i blacked out the rest came as like a slow coming back to information. And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. What did Wim Hof do to me? It was terrifying. So I got up. I went to the shower. Like, and I just sat in there and I turned on the cold water. And so I went back to my family for lockdown. I was living in London and I went back to Antigua because 
because I lost my dad young and I got worried for my mom because I didn't know we no one knew what this crazy virus was that was coming. So I went back there to be with her in case something would happen. Otherwise, I would have stayed in London, I think. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Anyway, so this happened. And I just cried out for help because once I sat in the shower, what I also realized was I couldn't get back up. My knee had seized up. And this is the knee that I tore the ACL uh, two, two years before. And I healed pretty well with uh, Joe Dispenza meditations, visualization meditations intensely for three months. Did every day an hour of meditation in the morning. Guys, it's, it really helped me. I did physio exercises as well, but it, it helped speed up the healing. Uh, so my experiences, I, I recommend it. It is, it is tough and it takes discipline. Um, but so I, I re, I'd re-injured it. So not, not to, not to stand like a woe is me story, but, um, control guys, make sure you know why you're doing something, why you're sticking to a routine, even though it's hurting you. And what I learned was that, um, you know, I was doing the gym and all this stuff for vanity reasons. And that's because I didn't feel enough. Like, uh, I didn't want to get, uh, I hadn't yet gotten my starring role in a, in a, in a, in a movie and I didn't want to. I didn't want to lose my prime looks wise. Uh, I, I didn't know if I was in, you know, I based too much of, of my self worth to women on what I look like because I talk like this all the time. And so it intimidates a lot of people I try to date. <laughs> and instead of waiting for the right person to come to me or like, you know, maybe just focusing on getting access to the people that were, that, that would be my tribe. Like, you know, being truly honest with myself and dedicating what I needed to, to, to a world that I can create, that I can love, that I can live in and love for myself. I was worrying about these minor things along the way and I was prioritizing them over what I really could have been doing. So guys, make sure you're not having that, that it's not like a fear of letting go that your routine is is not like some kind of control that, that you're disobeying your body, you're not listening to what you really need and it's costing you in the long run. But by all means, have healthy, rigorous routines because that teaches you a lot, that stretches you a lot, that um, opens your brain uh, to feeling less anxiety towards other, th like once you have mastery in something, you feel more confident in, in most other things. And also there's usually some kind of wisdom at the end of it that is not going to be understandable until you put in the time so guys uh for more on that you can watch my video on reframing anxiety i go i go in depth into that because it's really interesting but um my suggestion is you know have a purpose have a purpose purpose with your routine have a purpose with what you try and face to expand it and uh so i'm referring to my script a bit yeah so i'm saying here however there comes a point when our routine might be a fear of letting go and this is where you need to listen to your heart or your body. But at this stage, I think mostly your heart. And for this, I would suggest listen to my um, listen to the heart and know how to feed it video. But um, your heart aches when you're compromising heart health. And your heart is. OK, I'm going to go through this briefly, but I want to connect it to the other things. This is a connective video. Your heart is, um, it's a second brain because there's, there's brain matter around the heart. Your heart's breathing in the air around you. It's exchanging that into a sonic pulse. That sonic pulse is, is letting out a frequency. It is informing other hearts around it. This is how animals know whether they're in predator prey relationship. We're not animal. We're not, you know, we're humans. We're still an animal, but we're humans. Now we don't have like issues with sharks and bears and, and other animal predators we have issues with other human predators so you know just imagine what your anxiety your fraughtness because when we're, we're when we're anxious and stuff our heart emits an unsteady heartbeat imagine what that is communicating subconsciously to all of their hearts within proximity 
you know, hence this is why I think that, you know, like a lot of the manifestation stuff is uh, be emotionally positive as you as you manifest, uh, do things with a, with a high intention, keep yourself happy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you start to expand your frequency. You, you start to expand the realm of the heart. And once you start to get up there, it's, it stays easier because actually you you've you start to feel you're ingraining an innate wisdom of actually the world is a harmonious place to be in. But it's, I imagine, a little bit of subconscious conversation perpetuated by the heartbeat, heart brains, instincts. And who knows how wide that web casts. But um, yeah, so for more on that, uh, look at my video on, on, on feeding the heart. And the other thing I would say is, you know, you, you might choose a path and you might be very strict towards it. And in order to open those brain, those pa brain pathways, so you're very skilled, you're mastered of that thing that you know you want to do. And if you know quite young what you want to do, amazing. Go, go put that energy into it. Get it, get it, get a chance to do it. Uh, you know, go, 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 throw yourself into it, into the fray and, 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 and get rough and tumble and, and, and get those war wounds to, to, to become the master of the thing that you want to, that you love doing. However, another thing that happens as we as we get older is uh, we evolve. We have beliefs that evolve, and um, these beliefs get challenged as we get older, along the way, because we start to understand more. Because that's just how it works as human beings. So, guys, imagine. Um, well, I'm 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 34, and uh, I'm, I, like I imagine sometimes what I knew and what I understood when I was 20. And then I imagine what I knew and what I understood when I was 10. And then I imagine what I knew and what I, what I understood when I was three years old. And when I trace my conscious evolution like that, I notice that like every 10 years, reality kind of seems to display itself as something completely different. Like reality to, from, to a three-year-old compared to a 10-year-old, you're living in two different things. You know, like a 10 year old couldn't even like it would be a straining of its brain to 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 imagine what it felt like to be alive at three years old. It would be an imaginative exercise at that point. And so as we get older and we evolve because of the paths we've taken, the information we've decided to integrate, uh, the skills we've we start to teach the body, the things we want to master that we get in tune with, whatever that is you it starts to not only inform those skills and your realms of knowledge on those things but inform the way you understand the world around you and so at some point you might not resonate with that thing that you really wanted for some reason it's not fulfilling a deeper need in you it's not fulfilling a more intelligent version of yourself and that's where the body comes in that's where the heart comes into play there might be a compromise because i believe that as we get older we get more altruistic you know, in tribal societies, it was the grandparents that took care of the kids that was in charge of their um, upbringing. And I think that is because of what mature consciousness looks like, what you can know only at the age of 80. You know, and I've said this in other videos. Uh, for more on this, watch my video on existential angst. Kind of explains the evolution of, uh, in a nutshell, my nutshell, from being a, a baby to... Um, to understanding your higher self, really. That's where I took it on that one. And so eventually, uh, we might be participating towards something that no longer serves our truth, or it has become a tool, a financial tool, and this I'm seeing a lot in other, on other people's videos online, a tool to um, finance their truest desires. But you got you gotta notice that's the case. And let yourself come back to things if your heart's telling you that way. Stretch out and then come back. However, that takes a lot of courage and a lot of trust in our reality. That you can just be that fluid. And if life hasn't thrown you curveballs that teach you that that is a wise thing to do, like it, it did me, 
threw me curveballs that made me have to adapt around a lot of things. Or you're just prone to adventure. Uh, what we start to notice is a lot of institutions, people build their merit, build their career, build their prestige, build their self-worth around something that's become too rigid. And institutions, just like people who don't follow their body when their body wants something different, start to become rigid. And so I, I believe that institutions need to start, you know, this all this all is leading to my idea that um, we, we should start to remodel our truths. Not simply around this side versus that side. Although at certain at a certain age that is the most true thing, so that's obviously part of our growth, which is just an odd thing to to kind of consolidate. But we we need to model our institutions around what growth does to us, uh, or at least our personal upkeeping. Um, for me, what we know about growth is, is archetypal or, or, or spiritual or metaphysical uh, to the ar- our largest extent. Like science is not going to teach us the, spirit, the, the experience of consciousness as it, as it develops. Uh, it's going to look at what's happening cognitively, molecularly, physically, which is always amazing. We need to pair it. We need to pair it to these amazing geniuses like Joseph Campbell and Carl Jung. Carl Jung, who decided to write a language uh, as if, uh, write the language that living by following the voices in his head offered to him. I mean, that's a brave, brave individual. Joseph Campbell looked at myths around the world and realized there was patterns in these myths, no matter how removed the cultures were. And I mean, if you think about this, that can consolidate religious strife, that can consolidate cultural strife, that each culture is like a different flavor of a similar narrative. It's all ice cream, but there's different flavors. (laughs) however for me and this is reflective of my journey which has been um injury ridden as i've been teaching you uh i believe that we could be living in a way that is way more blissful if we favored transmuting trauma and this is why i have a poetic uh view on this where I, I you can check this out in my video trauma is an illusion where i decided to explore the idea of trauma as just an evolutive feature uh as a tool to teach us a way to live way more blissfully because deep healing feels amazing it allows you to have feel good hormones way more strongly be more grat fill your life with more gratitude if anybody's just had a strong energetic healing or release instantaneously it feels like a full body orgasm. It feels like your soul is touching yourself with your soul. It touch it. Yeah, it, it just, it, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's incredible. And so maybe, you know, our higher self is just trying to practice evolving into something way more interesting. So it can play way more interestingly. So this is why I link it back to um, Eastern philosophy and the idea of we are just... The God had divided the Brahman, chosen to forget itself so they can play out more complex, more interesting games. And the Brahman to me is now an allusion to like maybe a feedback loop between our, our, our DNA, which is, according to Carl Jung, the, st- the, the, stock, the stocking of every human aspect. But I think if you think about it, like the, if you think about evolution, probably every aspect of like any evolutive line or branch is contained it's transformed it's it's evolved so there's maybe a, a history a back catalog of, of it or, or or way to mix and match old settings within our dna and it's that coming 
up to date with the environment around it? How can it survive in the environment around it? And mutations are, you know, a slow process of adapting. And, you know, if humans have mastered the elements, but this is all in my video, uh, trauma as an illusion. If we've mastered the elements, we have the technology to live super comfortably. But this, I do want to link to this. Um, and, and I think this is where we grow. I think this is the hero's journey to me. Is where we, when, in our younger selves, we don't yet understand what we're a part of. So we go and we stretch and we go out towards something that's, we think is going to fulfill us and then it all ends up doing is teaching us so that we can then come back to ourselves and con and have a new place from which we want to try and contribute and a, a, a new journey to, to uptake and it's like coming away from the heart to expand the heart and uh, if we are if, if we are infinite beings come to live out a new life a, a soul come to live out a new new life then that's kind of an artistic gesture from that soul. It's like, you know, I think of these extreme mountain climbers and stuff. Oh, this guy on a Joe Rogan episode, I should look up his name, but he uh, he's broken all these records for for most major mountains scaled in like 10 days. He was the first guy to walk across, I think it's Antarctica, by foot with a, with a survival kit that he was slugging around like on a sled, which weighed 300 pounds. And I feel like, well, we are Brahma's, you know, chef d'oeuvre in terms of an expression of life, in terms of an extreme undertaking. <laughs> and those of us who kind of have the most extreme experiences of life, if you think about that, or the trauma that they are going to have to transmute, they're going to have so much wisdom to share. And also, they're going to have, they're going to be the test subject for the right types of healing and medicines to reach anyone with a similar experience to themselves. They're going to just give us more information about what it is to be human. That That's an analogy for the universe experiencing itself. We are just the universe experience observing itself. And sometimes I wonder if the we in that statement is not specifically human beings, rather than the whole of every being on the universe in the universe because we're we're mostly the the creature that seems to have the feedback loop with what we can do by understanding our own design in terms of uh molding our evolution so that yeah, that's a lot of big fucking words there i'm sorry guys Re replay that one and let me know if it makes sense if, if if there's a better way i could have said it just put that at the bottom in the comments I, I i tend to rehash videos and say them in a more condensed way anyway i should do that myself listen to this and do it myself do it yourself pierre stop being an asshole there I am again, trying to have the shortcut. Um, yeah, so this is a little phrase I came up with, which I'm proud, so I'm going to express it. Um, the, so another poetic way that I could express this, of like um, us forgetting ourselves and going the long way to come back to healing and to, to being ready to be to being in a position to be able to support ourselves, is the Wolverine story. If we knew we were immortal, then, you know, we could go and get hurt a million ways. We knew we were going to heal anyway, if it's not in light, this lifetime, but uh, then the next. And that has the most fodder to it. That Wolverine has the most stories written about him out of any of the X-Men, you know? Uh, or we could go through life, and this is something I picked up in a Loki comic book, so it's not my idea, neither the Wolverine, neither the Loki analogy, is we could have less stories, but uh, follow the heart past your shadow. Because Loki never compromises his truth. That's his whole thing. He has less stories written about him, but he's a trickster. He creates change at the joints. You know, he's a, he's a magical being. So he goes through his truth no matter what society fails to recognize. And, uh, and to just unfold to what our higher selves without all the hurt really wants from us. And our higher selves have already described as maybe what our DNA and our environment is programming us for. Like that feedback loop. Um, I mean, I think it's your choice at this point because I know my intuition t tends to really feel like it takes me to the right place most uh, whenever I can follow it. And so this is why I get a bit spiritual. So it's it's uh, your luxury whether you go the quick way or the long way. And, um, you know, if, you're, if you go the Loki, if you take the Loki mindset, you know... You're the god of stories. This is what just happens. 
And if you're the Wolverine, you know, you're the anti-hero. You always feel like you're fighting against something. And, um, and this needs to be taught that you can go the long way or the short way, I think, because, uh, for example, I had to struggle to learn how to listen to myself. And this was a trap of having too many rules. And uh, I think having too many rules, right or wrong, is the best way in which the shadow grows. It's the best way to grow shadow aspects of ourselves. And shadow is, in a sense, what we need to express to kind of fully understand ourselves and fully realize ourselves, which gets shoved away because of what it feels like for other people to... Because we, how we fear to be received and what we're not ready to see in ourselves because we judge it so we project it onto others so it's like keeping you from from a more harmonious way of being in which all behaviors are just you know something you can do to get to the right cause um and i think i think this needs to be examined more so in all institutions and all ideologies that rules kind of causes kind of suppression of self when followed too strictly and, and misses points and that we need to have like a you know we need to teach thinking about thinking philosophy is important guys even if we're not going to do a degree in it it's it's, a, it's an important overview of anything that, you, that you're in because when that information becomes wisdom rather than just information it's it's going to help us and I, I even think it's important to imbue in, in most things the, the remembering that we are ultimately a story in time and our environment. Uh, and that most truths are based on patterns which always have an exception. Nothing's that constant. Most rules. So they need to be fluid, just like we do. And, you know, there's nothing we can really build around the fact that we're just stories, but just to remember it. Remember it through things like meditation, yoga, and concepts that, that, that allow you to really deeply integrate viewing yourself and experiencing yourself as just something you're allowed to do. Uh, I believe what is most important is positive emotion, because that tends to lead to more positive manifestation, although we can't, be over, we can't become overly sensitive. To feel the highest highs, we have to also live in a way that allows us to feel the lowest lows and understand it's just a part of life. And that usually comes through empathy, strong empathy. So empathy is in there as well. And intelligent community support. And when I say intelligent, I mean like, you know, how, knowing how to hold space, uh, making sure we're, we're eating healthy food, uh, the, the right therapies understood for people, uh, no matter, and, and remember their opinion of what they need to heal. And to adapt to that, that's always a new way to heal others. And an exposure to spirituality and art. Because as even Karl Marx said, art is uh, the best view into the zeitgeist of society. And positive role models who have their story to show what the process looks like. And however, I know that our intuition will be challenged. That is just part of growing. However, but I think if our if we have positive meta truths that we uphold, um, that when our intuition is challenged, people can allow more respect and trust towards others, so the process of defiance isn't so brutal, and the outcome is less contentious. And this comes back to holding space. And then that's way, way more effective tool of change than just forcing rules on people. It teaches you about yourself. Because I think essentially we're all vessels who are subconsciously trying to heal each other. Because I believe ultimately we're all um, muscle fibers of the universe. We're trying to stretch. Trying to go into the gym. Go through that fraught tension. And then once we've gone through that fraught tension, we develop subconscious patterns that we need to play out with people to heal. So we're all subconsciously trying to support that same process of stretching and healing. And a few of us are going to traumatize each other and eventually someone's going to seem like the traumatizer and they're going to heal you. 
if you have the right container for it, which is one void of the serious stakes, implications, of real life needs for survival. So I think once, you know, we start to realize all the technology we're advancing and all this stuff, all the robot AI stuff taking care of stuff for us that we're advancing, if it's not serving to give us more time for play, for deeply supported play, then we're failing our own greatest intelligence as a species and we need to get our shit to fucking gather and organize a way for that to happen. And we need to listen to the people who are at the forefront of knowing how the fuck that happens, which isn't me, but I listen to a lot of them and these are, these are the connections I start to see after a while, which I'm sure they've come up with before me. But I gotta share my voice, guys. So, um, on that note, Remember the uh, muscle fibers or brain cells, maybe, of the universe. Refer to my uh, anxiety, reframing anxiety, and let me know. And uh, yeah, Healer Holly over and out. Hope you like this one. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, comment. Share on something that you saw because I know that most of my information has come from seeing things between conversation of other people that, that they did not notice. So I try and go back and watch these so I can expand my own knowledge. Um, this is what must make Joe Rogan an incredible comedian. Uh, love you guys. And find a way to work more easily. Healer Holly, over and out.